Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Ted, where today we're going to be going through the Season 4 patch notes, and I'm going to be kind of explaining what is happening, what is changing as we are going through it. I've already skimmed through them to try and get an idea, but I am going through them in depth as we go through this video. Let's just go ahead and get started, just to go ahead and know shotguns are getting buffed. That's kind of one of the main things that I saw on my first skim through. It, it, it kind of reads weird, but the more you read it, the more you're like, oh, oh no, this is not good. Let's jump straight into it. Of course, we already know about the new map, Vondel, the new weapons. We're going to get there in just a second. Uh, just some of the things are already covered kind of in some other blog releases, but new operators, uh, the new weapons, the Razorback, which I think is going to be pretty similar to how the Ram was in Modern Warfare 19, just from reading this. But we will know once we get into some gameplay here uh, later, I will be uh, posting some gameplay from the new map either later today or tomorrow. So make sure you are subscribed. I'm going to be trying to use both of these weapons to kind of see what it looks like. Uh, also, a submachine gun, the ISO, we've already had that in Modern Warfare 19. They say it's going to be very similar. Hopefully, it's a little bit more powerful to make it more fun. Uh, new melee weapon. Now, this is where we get into some interesting things. So, one, the shotguns. They're changing how shotgun damage registers, basically. More than four pellets hit a target. The highest damage will be used. So, four pellets... One of them is 15, one of them is 13, one of them is 12, one of them is 10. Instead of it being all individual, they will all use 15, making it where there's more damage, which is basically, it's not a silent buff because they're telling us, but it's a buff to shotguns overall. If you have not seen the leaks on Twitter, what is happening is the base health is being increased from 100 to 150, increasing the overall health of the player to 300. It explains it a little bit more. I'll explain a little bit more once we get there, but that's what you kind of need to understand from this paragraph right here. The actual balancing that happens, the Cronin Squall is getting uh, a pretty good nerf. Bullets to kill is increased by two in Warzone for full auto, semi-automatic, it's increased by one uh shotgun so the minimum damage was decreased on the bryson on both bryson but all the multipliers were increased basically balancing each other out it makes it we're actually going to get a buff at close range we're going to see some gameplay of it to see how that actually plays out but this is a buff at close range expedite 12 kind of same thing that there's only the leg multipliers not everything the broadside, it actually had a slight nerf to mid damage, but there's another change later. It's gonna make it where the broadside is getting an actual buff. Lockwood 300, again, minimum damage, but all the multipliers are increased, making it to where everything is going to actually be a little bit stronger in close range. And the midday damages were increased slightly. So machine gun, the Fennec got nerfed. It's already not great, and this is just burying it into the ground even more. A couple of attachment changes, one of them is very, very important. The F-TAC Siege, which is the full automatic pistol, is now going to be able to be akimboed. With the akimbo, if they don't change any of the damage profiles when it's in akimbo, this is going to absolutely be broken, especially on the new map, with how much water is going to be on the new map. This could be completely broken. We're gonna wait and see until we see some gameplay, but this could be absolutely insane. They changed the barrel on the seven on the on the seventy four U. Interesting, the what's kind of going on here? They replaced a barrel. I don't know if that means they're removing it or what what they're doing with it. But let, I'm ready to see what this one does. And this is where I was talking about a while ago, the broadside getting an actual buff, even though it wasn't mentioned up above. They are buffing the close range damage to the Dragon's Breath again. They nerfed it earlier, probably I think at the end of Season 2, beginning of Season 3. Now they're rebuffing it. This could be broken in close ranges and buildings. The only movement change, which is kind of annoying, is the weapon quick raise is now used when cutting your parachute. There needs to be more movement changes. This is this is one of my biggest issues with the entire game. It's just the movement sucks. But we're, we're getting some good changes. So, you know, it is what it is. The Warzone changes, of course, we've already talked a little bit about them, but they actually go more in-depth into them. Of course, we're getting the new map. It looks good. 
a lot of people have already talked about it. The only thing that really scares me is the amount of water. But other than that, I think it looks like a really, really good map. There's a new mode coming with the new map. It's basically just going to be hard point on a BR map. I'm curious to see how this plays out. Now, the big change, like I was talking about a while ago, where it goes much more in depth, is the player health pool has been increased from 100 to 150 full arm with full health you have 300 the biggest change that's coming with this as well so instead of your health regening after five seconds so if you took damage it would be five seconds and then your health would start to replenish itself this has actually now been nerfed to seven seconds i think this is a good balance change for this it's also going to make it where stems receive a buff from this I don't think there's going to be that many people running stems after this because they're just not, they're still not great, but this does buff the ability to use stems. Overall, I think this is an absolutely fantastic change. It's going to even out the time to kill a little bit. The biggest reason why I think this is good is I think it's going to actually make the time to kill a little bit more consistent. Sometimes you can just die ridiculously fast in this game. It doesn't even feel, it feels like multiplayer time to kill sometimes. With how the servers work and how they receive damage, Damage and all the they're only being at 20 hertz i think increasing this to 300 is going to make this feel much more stable so in the three in the season 3.5 update they changed it to where if you run over plates or you run over ammo it just automatically picks it up they're still doing that but they're making a change they're basically maxing it out so what's going to happen is you're going to be able to carry three plates in your pouch per se so you have three plates on you then you can have three plates that you're carrying on your person, and then your backpack will also automatically pick up six more plates. This means you're gonna be carrying nine plates, then the three that you also have on you. I think this is a good change because it made it, it was annoying trying to go through and just drop plates all the time, or just drop ammo. They're doing the same thing with uh, ammo, where whenever you're hitting munitions box it just has a fixed amount that it's going to allow you to be able to pick up i think this is an absolutely fantastic change just because it was annoying to have to go through and just be dropping plates all the time because i'm trying to pick up another stun pick up another drill charge just just this is a fantastic change i'm glad that they're making this i think this is the best of both worlds of what they're trying to do lastly what i think is probably going to be the best feature if it works and doesn't break the game, is they're finally adding the rejoin feature that has been leaked on Twitter last month. The basics of it, you are able to rejoin as long as you rejoin within four minutes. And then you ask also still have to have one person alive. If your player dies when you're trying before you're able to rejoin, you cannot rejoin at that point. For the gulag, the time to capture has been increased from four to three, so it won't feel as fast. This is a fantastic change, in my opinion. The the, the gulag fl flag time capture was insane. The amount of times where I, by the time I noticed it and started moving towards it, they would already have it captured, especially with the time to kill increase, with because that's also going to be taking effect inside the gulag. I think this is a good change. Another massive change that they're making is gas damage. They're decreasing this from nine down to six this is going to make a major change with how long you can be in the gas because a is they're decreasing this and b with the health increase i'm gonna do math this change is actually making it the amount of time that you can be in the gas go from 12 seconds to 25 seconds so more than doubling the amount of time that you're allowed to be in gas without a gas mask this is going to make rotating an end game so much better that is the most important things that i've been able to find through my first couple of read throughs if you want to go read the patch notes yourself i will link them down below make sure you like this video if you're still here and subscribe that way you find your way back as we will be covering more of this as the season goes on and anything that kind of pops up to like wow this change actually was a good change bad change things like that we'll probably cover that a little bit in a couple of weeks thank y'all so much for watching y'all slay out and aim for greatness